you turn our attention on the energy front to bust it here and the broken lines of communication between the, our president and the CEO of BP, Tony Hayward. Hayward saying that his company working, quote, hand in hand with the Obama administration to resolve the catastrophe in the Gulf. Of course, neither of the two men has actually spoken directly to the other since this entire thing began. Hayward says there's no need. He's already met with the president's top officials. We beg to differ. If there was ever two men who had lots of things to talk about, it would seem to be the President of the United States and the BP CEO in the Gulf of Mexico. In, in terms of our relationship with BP, uh, our, our general attitude has been that uh, they have an incentive to shut this thing down because it's going to cost them money and I'm going to stay on them uh, if it's the last thing I do in this administration to make sure they're paying have off those fishermen. Have you spoken directly to Tony Hayward, the CEO of BP? I have not spoken to him directly and, and here's the reason. Because uh, my experience is when you talk to uh, uh, a guy like uh, a BP CEO, He's going to say all the right things to me. I'm not interested in words. I'm interested in actions. And, 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 and we are communicating to him every single day exactly what we expect of him and what we expect of that administration. It, in all due respect, that feels strange to me, mm -hmm. that here we've got the CEO of a company that's responsible for the, the, the worst environmental disaster in U.S. history. And, and I think... I'm just curious why you didn't pick up. You wouldn't pick up the phone, and in some ways, just give them a piece of your mind. Well, the, the uh, look. The, the, this has sort of been. This has been the main critique of, of the administration is giving a piece of my mind to these guys. Uh, look, I would love to vent. I, I would love to to just shout and holler because I'm thinking about this uh, day in day out. But my main job is to solve the problem. To solve the problem you have to have a reliable partner. Let me read you some of the things that Mr. Hayward has said over the course of this disaster. He said the Gulf of Mexico is a big ocean. The amount and volume of oil and dispersant we're putting into it is tiny in relation to the total water volume. The environmental impact of this disaster is likely to be very, very modest. And then he said there's no one who wants this to end more than I do. I'd like my life back. Yeah, I well, mean, the, uh, I think... Uh, the family members of those 11 people who died on the rig and the people whose lives are going to be changed for years want their lives back, too. He doesn't work for you, but if he did, would you want him out? Uh, he wouldn't be working for me after any of those statements. First of all, we're going to have to find out why this thing went in the first place. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, is that uh, there's going to be a... Uh, a thorough review, and I don't want to prejudge. Critics are now talking about your style, which is the first time I've heard that in a long time. And they're saying, here's a guy who likes to be known as cool and calm and collected, and this isn't the time for cool, calm, and collected. Right. That this is not the time to meet with experts and advisors. This is a time to spend more time in the Gulf, and I never thought I'd say this to a president, but kick some butt. And, and, and I don't mean it to be funny. No, I, and, and I understand, and, and, and here's what I, I, I'm going to push back hard on this, because I think that, that this is a, just a, uh, an idea that got in folks' heads, and the media's run with it. I was down there a month ago, before most of these talking heads were even paying attention to the Gulf. A month ago, I was meeting with fishermen down there, standing in the rain, talking about what a potential crisis this could be. And I don't sit around just talking to experts because this is a college uh, seminar. 
we talk to these folks because they potentially have the best answers, so I know who's asked to kick, right? So, you know, this is not theater. Most of the decisions that I make on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I make because I have gathered the best information possible in very difficult situations. And my job is to figure out how can I move the federal government, the private sector, all the various players who are involved to perform some very, very difficult tasks. And I don't always have time to perform uh, for the benefit of the cable shows. Uh, what I do have is dedication and commitment to make sure that the people who are actually being affected by this uh, are going to get the best possible service from me. Uh, and as long as I'm president, that's the approach that I'm going to take to this job. He's clearly heard the criticism. Oh, yeah, uh, and frustrated by it as well. And reacting very strongly to it and, and, and trying to say that this, you know, I think his, his term, this is not theater, right. uh, is a very important one. And, and I wonder if you're going to hear a lot more of this type of emotion from the president from this day forward. Well, I think he probably liked this opportunity to show that side of him because so many people had said that, in fact, he wasn't showing any emotion. And obviously it bothers him tremendously. We are going to hear, by the way, more from President Obama in our next half hour.